So my name is Leah Beakley, and I'm a professor at the MIT Media Lab where I run a research group called High Low Tech. And today I'm going to talk to you about blending art and craft and technology. And I just realized I need that clicker thing. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Um, OK. So I'm going to talk about art and craft and technology. And more uh, specifically, I'm going to focus today on paper and on blending our traditions of paper art and paper crafts with embedded computing and embedded uh, electronics. And the structure of my presentation today is that I'm going to show you three techniques that you can use to blend traditional paper crafts with embedded computing, and then reflect a little on their implications and affordances. Um, so I'm going to start with taping, um, so a really simple technique that you can use with paper. And I'm just going to jump right in and show you a video of what you can do using tape and paper and electronics. Um, so a really simple example, and I just wanted to mention one quick thing about this particular technique, which is that that is made entirely out of uh, tape and paper, um, so scotch tape and copper tape and paper. Um, and this is something that's super easy to do um, right now, so I encourage you to just go out and get some of this stuff and play. Um, the second technique that I wanted to talk to you about is drawing and sketching. And once again, I'll just start with a video to give you a sense of what's possible in this space. Um, so this example, I wanted to stop and highlight um, one particular thing, which is what's um, kind of highlighted in the last construction that I built in that video, which is the potential for these paper-based devices to be part of larger and more complex systems. So what you saw in that example is how a sketch that I made on my sketchbook that had an embedded microcontroller 
can be turned into an interface that drives an application that runs on a laptop computer, or kind of another computational system. So there was a, the music program was running on my laptop, and that sketch that I made was running that program. So imagine what you can do here, that essentially any sketch that you make in your sketchbook with that pen can be an interface. So really powerful um, sketching and prototyping and learning tool here. Um, and the final example that I wanted to show to you here um, is folding. Um, so what I'm gonna show to you next is a suite of techniques and tools that we've been using to get paper to fold and bend and generally move itself around. Um, so these uh, tools are built using uh, shape memory alloy, so a metal that changes shape when you heat it up. And we can um, cause that shape changing uh, by running electrical current through the wire. Um, and then let me show you what that enables us to do. Um, so what I wanted to pull out from that set of examples is that sometimes people look at some of the work that we do, and especially kind of the, the simple um, circuits with, with, say, just LEDs and switches, and, and they, they get the impression that there's kind of a hard ceiling on what's possible with these materials. And I wanted to share this example, or this set of examples, just to show you that this is a really rich um, and a, a really rich uh, space that has lots of potential that we've just beginning to explore. So that there's a really high ceiling here. So people can do go out and do really important and rich work in these spaces. Um, okay, so so far I've showed you three techniques for combining electronics and computation and paper. Um, but you might rightly be asking yourself, what does this have to do with technology education? So I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the work that we do with people in my lab. So in addition to developing this technology, we teach um, a number of workshops throughout the year, um, kind of experimenting with these technologies in different kind of classroom and workshop settings. Um, and one of the things, perhaps the most important thing that's come out of those experiences for us has been that materials like paper and paint um, and tape and sketchbooks, that these are materials that are appealing and engaging and attractive to a wide diversity of people. Um, and in particular, they're appealing to people who are not the usual suspects. So they're appealing to people who might not normally be into building a robot or building an electrical circuit or, or building a video game. So they're using materials like paper and paint provides a really powerful way to attract diverse communities of people into engineering and into science. So what you're seeing here is just one snapshot from one of our workshops. This is a workshop we taught on interactive painting through a local arts and crafts museum. And this was a wide open workshop that we just announced to the general uh, public. And this is the group of people who showed up. 
So really powerful way to engage people who are just normally off of kind of our radar. Um, the other point that I wanted to make um, relates more explicitly to the kinds of learning that happen in these situations. And uh, so I think these materials can support um, what Sherry Turkle calls epistemological pluralism in a really interesting way. Um, so to demonstrate that, I want to briefly talk you through this diagram. Um, so so what, what is this thing that I'm showing? Well, well as the, the text here says, it's a circuit. Um, so it's a, it's a very simple circuit. So there's a, a battery and an LED and a switch. Um, but it's also a symbolic representation of a circuit. So it's a schematic diagram. And you can see the schematic symbols for the LED and the resistor there in the drawing. Um, and then third and finally, it's a sketch. So it's in an aesthetic um, presentation um, that you can enjoy as a sketch or a drawing as well as a circuit. Um, so this, I think, powerfully, uh, very simply but powerfully demonstrates how these materials can provide entry points for people um, with really different perspectives and values and interests. So people can approach this aesthetically, they can approach it uh, symbolically, or they can kind of approach it very physically and gesturally. Um, so these materials have really rich possibilities that change how we can think about learning in these spaces as well. Um, so thank you very much. <laughs>